Baha'u'llah left for Constantinople on May 3rd, 1863. He remained there for only four months and was banished further to Adrianople, present-day Edirne in European Turkey. Ahmad remained in Baghdad and served the faith in that city with great devotion. However, in his heart he longed to be with his Lord. After some time he could no longer bear to stay away, and so he set off for Adrianople. When he arrived in Constantinople, he received a tablet from Baha'u'llah, which is now universally known as the Tablet of Ahmad. On reading it, Ahmad knew immediately what was expected of him. Surrendering his own will to that of Baha'u'llah, he returned to Persia to proclaim the advent of him whom God shall make manifest to the persecuted remnant of the Babi community. This was no easy task. The Babi community in Persia was in complete disarray. The Bab and most of the Babi leaders of any note had been executed. The believers had limited access to the writings and teachings of their own faith. And for one of their fellow believers to return after seven years of absence, only to tell them that another prophet had now appeared in fulfillment of the teachings for which their friends and family had been slaughtered and for which they themselves had endangered their very lives was considered blasphemy. In spite of these difficulties, Ahmad spent the rest of his life teaching the Babis about Baha'u'llah. Wherever he went, he carried the tablet of Ahmad written in Baha'u'llah's exquisite hand. Ahmad was a humble man, but his example has influenced the lives of many. The exact date of his birth is unknown, but by most accounts, he was well over 100 years of age when he passed away in 1902. His spiritual sensitivity and detachment from the world enabled him to recognize the exalted station of two manifestations of God appearing in his lifetime and remain faithful to both. He thus embodies the fundamental principle they taught, the oneness of God and the essential oneness of his messengers. <laughs>